Throughout the 1990s, comic book properties were flailing about trying to find their voice, their identity, and their audience in movie theaters and on television. Some of the films released would establish the foundation for the golden age of comic book movies that we have been living in for nearly two decades. But those few hits were at the expense of a lot of misses. For every Batman Returns, there was a Batman and Robin. For every Blade, there was a Steel. A lot of bad decisions were being made. This is a story of the best decision ever made as a result of some of the worst decisions ever made. This is a story of a very close call. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the Justice League of America pilot. Comics have been an inspiration for TV and film going back to the 1940s. Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image, every company has taken their shot at capitalizing on the popularity of their characters and the unique storytelling opportunities the genre can deliver to an audience. As the technology has improved, more movies and TV shows about superheroes have been released. In theory, a superhero movie is proportionately more exciting relative to the degree that those superpowers can convincingly be depicted on screen. We can believe in the character through writing and performances. We want to believe in the extraordinary feats in the superhuman abilities, but we can't get there if the effects on screen don't do their part to help suspend our disbelief. But that technology, the borderline realism, wasn't quite there in the late 1990s. Even if a production budget could afford the latest and greatest CG, it still looked CG. Some would say that it still does today. Movie and TV superhero storytelling was still very dependent on scenes of characters talking about superhero stuff rather than doing superhero stuff. Between the release of Tim Burton's Batman in 1989 and Batman and Robin in 1997, fans were treated to movie hits like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in 1990, The Rocketeer in 1991, and The Crow in 1994. They also had to struggle through the release of Captain America in 1990, Barb Wire in 1996, and Spawn in 1997, and lots of stuff in the middle. Ah! I warned you, Susan! While on TV, The Flash, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers all benefited from the popularity of comic book-inspired characters to varying degrees. And it was into this super comic book character environment in 1997 that Warner Brothers attempted an ambitious follow-up to their already successful Lois and Clark The New Adventures of Superman, heading into its fourth season with a fifth season contracted for 1998. Justice League of America was an 86-minute pilot episode produced and intended for release in 1997. As with every pilot episode, there is the potential to be picked up for a full series. And while it wasn't produced by the same creators as Lois and Clark, the production borrowed the visual style, tone, and pacing of Lois and Clark, potentially placing it in the same universe in concept, if not in execution or even on the same broadcast network. It looked, it felt like a show that couldn't decide whether it was for a primetime adult audience or a Saturday morning kids audience. And while it gets a few points for bright, colorful interpretations of the comic book costumes, they were a hard sell even back in 1997. The characters looked outlandish and unbelievable. And unfortunately, the real stars of the Justice League, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, were all committed to other movie and television projects. This JLA was made up of other guys, The Flash, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, The Atom, and Fire. The pilot was built around the recruitment of new JLA members, no, not Aquaman, not Hawkman, not Shazam, not Plastic Man, Green Arrow, or Zatanna, no, not Hawk Girl, Cyborg, no, not Black Canary, Ice. The answer we were looking for was Ice. <laughs> All the big stars were on board. John Kassir as the Atom, David Ogden Steers as Martian Manhunter, Matthew Settle as Green Lantern, Kenny Johnston as The Flash, Michelle Hurd as Fire, and Kimberly Oja as Ice. Justice League of America was directed by prolific TV director Felix Enriquez Alcala. It was written by Lauren Cameron and David Hosselton, fresh off First Night, a retelling of the world of King Arthur and Camelot, starring Sean Connery and Richard Gere, but who had also worked together previously on Like Father, Like Son, the 1987 Dudley Moore, Kirk Cameron body swap film. Justice League of America was never broadcast or released in the United States of America. If you lived in the UK, Puerto Rico, Thailand, Brazil, Poland, Mexico, South Africa, Germany, India, or Israel, it is possible that you may have caught it on one of the broadcasts in those countries. 
To be fair, more often than not, new TV series don't make it any further than the pilot episode. Every year, major networks order around 20 pilots for new series. Less than half of those actually get picked up for a full series. Justice League, despite being a finished movie with finished visual effects and a budget that had already been spent, did not get picked up. Maybe it was because the producers realized that the finished product wasn't quite what they had hoped it would be when it was conceived. Maybe the sagging ratings that got Lois and Clark canceled before even producing their fifth season, despite being contracted for it, was a warning sign of where the market was heading. Maybe the powers that be realized that they were on the wrong tonal side of the comic book film and TV trend. There's no telling for sure how the audience might have responded to it, but it is possible that making the decision not to release it saved later productions like the Justice League animated series, which arrived in the year 2000. Whatever the reason, Justice League of America is not an oddity because of the quality of the production or the costumes or the visual effects, though they certainly be odd. It's an oddity because it ended up precisely where it should have because the people tasked with making the decisions finally made the right one by preventing it from advancing any further. And that is the justice this league was finally able to deliver for America. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. Please share this video. And if you're in the position to help the channel grow, visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toy galaxy. And let us know in the comments down below what your ideal Justice League roster is. I'm confident about the core Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, after that, it gets shaky. Green Lantern, Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg. The rest would all just be mission specific. Fire and ice. I don't have a use for Plastic Man. I don't know.